Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Our Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Play Me, written by In Yellow Clad. The many species within the galaxy just didn't seem to understand that going to war with humanity was an exercise in futility and stupidity. The humans had already revealed their technological arsenal against the Urad and the Empire. But coupled with such powerful and devastating weapons were the supernatural. With the new species, somebody just had to test themselves against the humans. All of them, without fail, thinking this time would be different. They'd put the stupid, weak humans in their place at the bottom of the totem pole. How wrong they were. See, humanity, having grown tired of the constant attacks and the required deployments of their troops to distant worlds, devised a new weapon. One not nearly as destructive as an antimatter bomb or a new, but something even more terrifying. A weapon that once deployed would not stop until it was told to stand down. And even then, it could be a bit temperamental when given such an order. This weapon took an ancient and humble form, but was, for all intents and purposes, a symbol of the terrible might that humanity possessed. But also, perhaps, its charisma and charm. For how else could they have managed to tame such a weapon in the first place? This weapon was simple. It was a VHS tape, and the corresponding equipment to play said tape. They only made one of them, but one was all they'd ever need. It first found itself deployed against the Gosian, where they were a species of pompous gas bags, and uh, that's being nice, who thought that even though they were the younger species yet to reach the stars, that they were better than everyone else, even if it was plainly obvious they weren't. They paraded around like peacocks and acted almost as haughty as that might imply. They talked down to everyone and looked down their noses as well, even though they stood on average at two human feet tall. Finally, it was the humans who accidentally started the war between themselves and the Gosian. When the ambassador of humanity had been having a really bad day already, a Gosian ambassador only made it worse till they finally snapped and insulted the ambassador's stunted height. The Gosian took any comment upon their height as an insult, even if it was a compliment. Needless to say, war was declared on the spot, and the human was left with the ever-growing migraine, with the Gosian blabbered on, but how they would utterly destroy humanity and force them to bend the knee. Four days later, the not-so-mighty fleets of the Hegemony entered Terran space, and promptly ran straight into a brick wall of self-replicating minefields, asteroid-mounted heavy rail guns, and an entirety of the Terran Navy arrayed between them and the now not-so-vulnerable colony worlds. The rest of the galaxy sat back and watched. Many passed around the popcorn and wondered how long it would take for the humans to actually get so annoyed by the incessant irritation of the Gosian to actually strike back and counter it bade. Little did anyone know, but humanity had already deployed its brand new weapon aboard the stealth ship which slipped into orbit over the capital planet and launched this weapon at a mostly uninhabited region of it. To the poor farmer that found the care package, they thought it was some strange ancient tech from a long lost species, as the common folk of the hegemony had no clue at all about human tech, and when presented with it, they would just stare at it blankly. But the shrug, the farmer carted the package back home and then forgot about it till the next day, when he went to investigate it and found it missing. Again, he shrugged and went about his business, but unwittingly, he had doomed his government. The ship broke orbit and relayed a heavily encrypted message back to headquarters. The tape is in the wild. When Supreme Prime Minister Kuras entered his office one fine evening, for his people were mostly nocturnal sorts, he found a strange contraption already assembled within. It was conveniently at his height and seemed to be some sort of ancient technology, but marked in a Gosian language. 
but in school he'd never once seen a thing ever in any of the history books or scrolls. The contraption was comprised of three distinct objects. The verge was a large box with a glass face that looked unwieldy and unreasonably heavy. The second was a smaller box without the glass facing, and it was in a more rectangular shape than the larger box was. It had a few buttons, but they were all covered in scratches and some sort of adhesive pad. There was a rectangular slot within the face as well that when touched ripped open to reveal a place with a third and final object. A simple slab of plastic and some sort of film within on swirls. Upon its cover, he saw in perfect cozy in the words, Play me. There was one final object, of course, but it was merely a picture instructions of how to insert the slab of plastic and film into the smaller rectangular device and activate. Being a curious fellow that he was, he did just that, pushing the VHS tape into the player and pressing play. Immediately, the large box activated as well. Nothing but static at this time, till the grainy image appeared. It was a simple, placid-looking field, but the image was all washed out. A mixture of bright whites and slightly less bright greys. It also had the strange distortion to it. It would falter and jump ahead, it seemed, the image sometimes shifting from one side to the next. And then the field changed, flashing through countless other images in mere seconds. Most of them were peaceful, quaint human dwellings, interspersed with some weird auditory glitches that almost sounded like screaming, and flashes of red as well. Strange symbols and places that made no logical sense. Finally, though, it settled on the field again, and now there was a poorly dug hole in the field, one that just seemed to go on forever. Now, Supreme Prime Minister Kuras was not a cowardly fellow. He, he turtly was, and by now he would have been running, but he found himself rooted on the spot, unable to force himself to look away from the screen. The world around him darkened almost, till he could see was the image before him. He felt a compulsion to lean in, and did so, only to jerk himself backwards when the image glitched again. And now... He could see a pale human hand clutching the side of the hole, streaks of dirt and muck. Then it glitched again, and another hand had joined the first. The view pulled back with another glitch, and he could see something moving just below the rim of the hole, and then something pulled itself from it. A woman with long black hair. Human, clearly. He'd seen enough of the old sniveling barbarians to know one when he saw it. But unlike the well-kept humans he'd seen, who prided themselves on their primitive fashions and appearances, this one was anything but. Shapely, yes, if the ill-fitting and tattered gown suggested, but streaked in dirt and her hair matted and unruly. With jerking motion, she started to approach him, and he felt his heart start to race against his will, fear coursing through him. Another jolt and she was closer, then closer still. Finally, she seemed to be standing right before the camera, her face obscured by her long, black hair. She simply stood there for a long moment. And then the screen began to bulge, as though something was trying to escape. Caress promptly fell onto his tiny behind, scrambling away as she struck an arm through the screen, before it snapped and bent in an almost excruciatingly wrong direction. Her slender fingers gripping the edges of the device to pull herself out. Like some ancient beast dragging itself from its lair, she crawled forth, and though he started to scream, his security detail could not enter the room as the doors had been sealed shut. Apparently, by something unknown. So he did the only thing that he could think of. He scrambled behind his desk and started throwing things at the human woman who'd invaded his office. Many of the objects that managed to connect simply went through her. As she straightened up to her full height, he ran out of things to throw. 
Do, do you know who I am, human? I am your better. Ye cease this at once. So, so help me. I'll, uh, I'll, uh... He trailed off, watching as she twisted around with sickening cracks and pops, and promptly scuttled towards him with jerky, popping motions. In a moment, he found himself pressed into the soft cushions of his most expensive chair, and staring into a single eye that had been revealed through the curtain of hair over her face. It was a pretty green color, but streaked makeup showed that she'd once cried rather heavily, and the white around the circle of the green was heavily bloodshot. Her lips were full, but when she opened her mouth, there was nothing but darkness within. A rattling, hissing inhalation followed as she crouched strangely over him, and slowly she leaned in, leaving her lips right beside one of his ears. Ten days, was all she said, and then she was gone. When next he blinked, and so was the strange device that had summoned her. Over the next ten days, he was plagued with hallucinations, glimpses of strange pale humans everywhere, and it only got worse. Till one day, he was found dead in his office, his heart having finally given out thanks to intense fear. The day after that, when his replacement arrived, they found a strange contraption in their office, and a single tape with the simple words on it, Play Me. On Earth, the general in charge of the VHS project sat at his desk, when the lights started to dim of their own accord, and the screen flickered to life on the wall to his right, though this would normally be a concerning event to experience for anyone. He didn't seem the least bit perturbed, if anything, he was expecting it and leaned back in his chair at the same pale. Dirty woman crawled her way through the screen that flickered, only to fall on the floor heavily with a squeak of surprise and just a hint of pain. In an instant, though, she recovered and was standing ominously before his desk as she steepled his fingers. They didn't say anything, but in a flash, she perched herself daintily on, upon the edge of his desk and was pushing strands of hair from her face and tucking them behind her ear. How goes the spooking, Yumi? He finally spoke, pulling open a drawer and grabbing a pair of crystal glasses, complete with a bottle of whiskey and a juice box. He filled the glasses and held out the juice-filled one to her. She gratefully took the glass and sipped it, kicking her legs slightly. She opened her mouth to speak, only for a rattling hiss to escape before she coughed gently. <coughs> Quite well, um, they aren't the brightest bunch. They see the tape with the instructions on it, and they just can't help themselves. She spoke softly, and her voice was far more pleasant than her exterior would suggest. Shouldn't be long now. I, I think they'll be getting the hint soon enough. Excellent. Then I'd say that this is a massive success. I am looking forward to having you around more often once this is done, the general said. And she smiled warmly, which was a feat unto itself for a being like her. Same. Oh, uh, when I get back, could we go see the ducks? She asked, her eyes bright and hopeful. For sure. He was treated to the sound of a happy ghost, who wriggled in place and joyfully drank her juice. Yumi was correct. Within forty days of her deployment, the Gozian finally capitulated, and the VHS weapon found itself mysteriously returning to a secure lockup on Mars. Four years later, Another species would rise and challenge that humanity presented, and was subsequently treated to the same tack. In time, whenever another species would even start to get a little belligerent, all it took to make them stand down was to set a simple and inert recreation of the VHS tape down on the table between the delegates and ask a simple question. Are you sure? Eventually, the rest of the galaxy started to coach newcomers on how to act around humanity, and in time the VHS was hardly ever used as a deterrent. In fact, it was mostly forgotten about, but it would remain unable to degrade over the years, just waiting for another opportunity to arrive where it could be unleashed upon those that dared attempt to dominate humanity. End of story.
I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.